attorney at law, and that is me. Elements of Claims and Defenses in Nevada by Dayar Williams, attorney at law, and that is me. And we are on letter A, Assault. The tort of assault is defined as the willful threat or attempt to harm or touch another offensively, which threat or attempt reasonably places the other in fear of such contact. The threat or attempt must be coupled with a definitive act by one who has the apparent ability to do the harm or to commit the offensive touching. An essential element of the tort of assault is that the actor knew with substantial certainty that his or her act would bring about harmful or offensive conduct, contact. Assault and battery is a state law tort, tort claim. An assault in tort law is the threat or use of force on another that causes that person to have a reasonable apprehension of imminent harmful or offensive conduct, contact. The act of putting another person in reasonable fear or apprehension of an immediate battery by means of an act amounting to an attempt or threat to commit a battery. A battery, in tort law, is an intentional and offensive touching of another without lawful justification. A plaintiff is entitled to damages when he or she suffers the trauma of apprehension. A sumsit. A sumsit from the Latin he has undertaken, from Latin asumere, is a form of action at common law for the recovery of damages caused by the breach or non-performance of a simple contract, either expressed or implied and whether made orally or in writing. A subset was the word always used in pleadings by the plaintiff to set forth the defendant's undertaking or promise, hence the name of the action. Claims and actions of a subset were ordinarily divided into the following classes, common or in debitatis a subset, brought usually on an implied promise and a B special assumption founded on an express promise. The actual causes of action that could be pleaded through a subset were known as the common counts and could be pleaded in a terse, compact style. The development of the action of a subset in the 14th century gave rise to the enforceability of the oral promise. Although parties to an action could not be witnesses, the alleged promise could be enforced on the strength of oral testimony of others not concerned with the litigation. To maintain the action of a sumsit for money had and received, there must be either an express or implied promise to pay the plaintiff. It is the foundation of an action of a sumsit that there is a contract relation between the parties, a promise to pay, either express or implied. The Common Law Procedure Act of 1852 abolished the common law forms of action in England and Wales. Furthermore, some said as a form of action became obsolete in the United Kingdom after the Judicature Acts of 1873 and 1875 were passed. In the United States, a subset like the other forms of action became obsolete in the federal courts after the adoption of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure in 1938. 35 states have moved to rules similar to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, which have replaced the various forms of action with the civil action. However, many states continue to recognize a subset as a common law or statutory cause of action, or allow the use of the old common counts as causes of action. For example, California has a special common counts cause of action form to be attached to an optional form complaint based directly on the old common counts that were pleaded in a subset. See Money Had and Received.